this folding, yeah? How to fold and how to let this go. So, I didn't put it that way, but you know, it has nothing to, to do with Kung Fu, Karate, Tai Chi, Taekwondo. I said, this is mechanics. So, doesn't matter, yeah? And it's only a, a little guest spot right now, like I'm going to be there every week. So, just said, just try to discover this. So, Chinese call this Kwa. This is the Kwa, right, the hip. And we all know about, I talk about this all the time. There's such my emphasis now, but we know we have to fold. But what I pointed out to them is exactly the same thing. They said, we, we say fold, but we so focus on form, right? So we say, go down low, oh, fix your upper body, right? And then you fix the upper body and everybody expands like this, right? Uh, hey, get back down. So you're trying to hold this and you're trying to force yourself down instead of just relaxing right, and folding. Right? So, you know, for me as, a, as an educator, there's a lot of messages in there. Like, oh yeah, there's, we create so much confusion. You say, hey, we're going to focus on this today. And then we start fixing other pieces <laughs> right, that get in the way of what we're focusing on. Yeah. And then we make it hard. Right? So we make it artificially harder than it is because we don't let them relax. Yeah. So yeah, it's a big learning lesson in there and for me. So still learning how to teach and you know what, how to break things down and and such. But um, it's it's interesting to go to a brand new group, right? That's supposedly a different style. But I'm not focusing on style. And within that short, I think maybe I ended up about 45 minutes. Within that short time, you could see people relax. You know, and that's, I see it over here when we do the standing, especially that I started out and said, okay, go down. And they can go down this much. But by the end of the class, you can see them relaxing. Yeah? And just because they relax, you go down lower. It looks like I'm lower, but really it's just the upper body folding, right? Because from here to here, I really didn't go down much lower. But you feel the upper body going down and you think, oh, way down, but it's not. It's not. Yeah. And the other part I try to point out to them, so if you remember this too, is right, when, you, when you flex these muscles for the, the power, right, make it strong, the muscles are expanding this way. So even if my knee, my leg and my knee are this way, right? If I'm flexing, I'm still pushing out this way. Right? So when we're standing and I'm flexing right, and I'm tensing, I'm actually pushing force into the knee. And that, that gets amplified if the knee comes forward, right? That just makes it worse. But even if the knee is back because I'm tensing so much, right? I'm not pulling the muscle this way, right, I'm, I'm expanding out. So I'm creating pressure. In, if you relax, right, then you sit and the muscle relaxes and the muscle doesn't push as much. Yeah. So really listen to this and it all comes down to relaxing. So Sung, Sung is so important. You know, I, I do the Kung Fu for years. And I rarely heard of Sung. It wasn't important in the Kung Fu, it was just too, so much external. We talk about internal, but it, it doesn't matter. So, it, so it, it is interesting, like when I look at the karate training, what we see, right? I'm not in the class, so I don't see 100%. I only see what's in public. But to me, I realize, oh, that's like external Qigong, the hard Qigong. Has to have internal, right? Have to have breathing and such, yeah. So the other thing I gave them was um, because one of the students asked because the instructor was doing ki, right, the yell. And I thought it was interesting because she said, oh, what syllable are you saying? What sound are you saying? And she had to, to think and, she's, and it was just, oh, this is what I'm using. So when I came up, I said, you know, you can just to throw it out there, like we use ha, right? And I just talked about this. So if you use ha, it it relaxes and opens up everything, right? So you go, ha, right? Opens the throat, relaxes the chest. And it's very deep sounding, right? And so when you breathe in, it's more 
kind of the H U H sound like the. <gasps> but when you exhale, it's ha, so, and the inhale is. Right? It's yawning. So when you use that sound, your mouth opens, right? The mouth is round, the jaw opens, the throat opens, and the lower belly just expands the diaphragm. Right? So you, you think about that, right? And in the Hawaiian culture, ha. But if you don't think about it, it's just another word and definition, right? But if you relate it to this, it's like, oh, that makes sense. That sound really makes sense. Okay. So the, um, the Tao, I don't know if it's Taoist, but there's, there's something called six, six silent sound Qigong. And um, I, I got exposed to it once. I don't, I don't practice it now. But if you go and research six silent sound Qigong, right? Energy is frequency. So every sound has a certain frequency, right? So Ha mm -hmm. has a certain frequency. Om, they do Om because it's supposed to be the frequency that earth vibrates at. So you meditate, oh, you're trying to vibrate the same as earth, right? You, there's no conflict, right? there's no dissonance. So um, what they found is that all your organs, right? Each organ has a certain frequency and not all the same. So the six silent sound is you just say the syllable silently. It might, when you first learn it, you might have like just, just barely you can hear it, but it should get softer and softer. So like there's a, um, I forgot basically all of them. I think heart was like an S sound, you know, like snake, like So you go like, but make it silent. And then you know which organ it associates with. And it's, it's just the breathing, just breathing in and, so you form the syllable with your tongue, your mouth, and do everything to make the syllable except just make it silent. Yeah. And I don't even think there was movement for that. It was just, it was just still and just creating that vibration and that frequency inside there. Yeah. So if you're interested in meditation, that's a nice meditation. Just go on YouTube, look for, or just go on the web, look for six silent sound or six sound chikung. And then you go, this thing is going to come up. It's all over. And you'll probably see it under um, handouts by Mantak Chia. <laughs> but it's called Six Silent Sound. If you're really interested, bug me. And I know I have a handout somewhere. <laughs> On my Google Drive or something. Yeah. But it's a, real, yeah, it's a really interesting thing. Yeah. It'll, give you, it'll give you a new perspective to watching Harry Potter and, and the snake. <laughs> Hey, that sound is good for your heart, right? <laughs> Slytherin isn't as bad as <laughs> the movie makes it. <laughs> hey, so, yeah, you know, my friend had asked me, oh, can you show them you know, some exercises for fall prevention? And basically, I just took them through what I did the last couple of weeks, you know, the stretching and just pointing out why that's fall prevention. Okay. All right, extend and then gently press the knees down. Right, and then relax and, and just stretch the feet forward and relax. As you stretch and relax, relax the foot and just slowly expand the toes out. Yeah? And relax the hips and feel the hips opening up. Okay, and then slowly let it go. Okay, and then do it again. Okay? Gently press right? and then stretch the foot. So when we stretch, press the knees back, right? We're not hyperextending, no pain, just that gentle, just, it's just stretching. Yeah. And then pull the foot back, pull the foot back a little gently. And stretching the Achilles tendon, the calf muscles, right? And then relax and then forward. Oh, anybody watch football? Yeah, Achilles tendon. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> poor Aaron Rodgers, poor Jets. <laughs> uh, you know, and part of that is a little bit age too, yeah? It's, we do slow down a little bit and 
And if you know anything about an athlete like Aaron Rodgers, right? Aaron Rodgers, Kobe Bryant, you know, those are the athletes that, oh, you cannot keep up with them and train with them. And you dying. One hour you give up, they're still going. Yeah. Like, okay, just, just sit on the side. Three hours later, they're done with their warm up and <laughs> all their drills. Yeah. So it's interesting. The other thing that happened out of that is the, the players' union is calling for natural grass again. Right? It's just another example for natural grass. You know what's under, under artificial turf, right? Concrete. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, one of the things I was stressing for them is um, one of the big causes of falls right, is tight Achilles tendon. Yeah. So it is important to constantly flex. And as, as I've been saying, I think the back of the knee, we've really neglected that a lot. Right? We, don't think of, we don't think of just a general stretch like this. Right? The only way we stretch it is if we doing this how many of you can do that kind of stretches anymore how many of you want to do that kind of stretches to stretch yeah right so <laughs> how many of you just want to sit down watch what you want and have somebody else serve you <laughs> yeah we're not stretching the back of the knee right somebody else is stretching the we're stretching somebody else's back of the knee <laughs> so yeah start to really listen to this because if the legs are tight, right, any part of the legs are tight, that contributes to our falls, right? Our stuttering, our, okay? And then relax. So let this go, right? Let's let everything drop. So if you let, teach your body how to crumple. And that all helps with the fall prevention. Yeah? But my thing is, right, fall prevention is centering. So when you fall, Right. If you're going to fall, you want to be right in the center, right? But if you are unbalanced, right, then boom. So if you're unbalanced, you want to just relax and then everything can center again. Yeah. So hopefully we never fall, but, you know, yeah, we, we want to minimize, minimize the impact, minimize the chance. Yeah, and hopefully we don't fall from there. Um, yeah, you never want to see my house right now. Our house, it's, oh, I won't, I won't let fall prevention guys come into our house because I know, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> you got to clear all of that away. <laughs> uh, one of the simple things for fall prevention, just since I'm mentioning, is uh, rugs. Yeah. So take, take a close look at the kind of rugs you have and one of the first things these people do is they tell you get rid of the throw rugs throw rugs get rid of rugs yeah the small little throw rugs yeah that they contribute to a lot of falls because you either get caught on them they're loose yeah all those things yeah okay all right so I said the first lesson is to let go. You remember that? Okay. Because when we look at what are we doing, everything has a purpose. So as soon as we prepare, right? So the first thing we do is just take a nice, nice breath in and bring up the hands and then let it out. Ha. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then we start gathering. So the first thing is learn how to let go. Yeah, come down. Yeah, when I said that to that group, this one lady went on. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't sure if she was disputing me or, or just agreeing like, you know, yeah, it's so hard to let go. Yeah, that kind of shake the head. So when I said it at the end of class and as I'm showing them how you have to let go and it's the first lesson, I'm watching her and it, it changed. <laughs> Take a nice deep breath. Expand, expand the lower belly, and then drop the shoulders, the elbows, the wrist, the palm, and guide that. Feel like you're bringing that, that ball down into the earth, 
Mm. You feel your feet letting go. Open the throat, use the ha sound. Even this slow exhale, that ha sound, that ha. Bring the feet back, relax them, pull the energy up through the ground. And when I do that, I can feel myself automatically expanding the legs into the earth. You want to expand into the earth in the bottom of the feet. You want to pull the chi up through the bones. Wash the bone marrow. You want to suspend the top of the head from above. Relax all the joints in between. You want the fingers expanded, being pulled outward, stretching. And we want all the muscle tissue all the fascia expanding and stretched until they slowly let go. We want to open and loosen the joints. And if we open and loosen the joints and then the blood vessels and the nerves, if we help to relieve tension off of them. You feel your feet reaching into the earth. Press and then come down. Okay, bring your hands in the front. Come up. Turn the palms. Gently press and then arch back a little bit. And then come down, straight down. Bring the hands on the side. Then one more time, gathering right in the front. Turn the palm, pressing up, and then back, and then back, one more time, and just do a third time, breathing in, expand the lower belly, open the throat, gently pressing up, and then back, and then down. So that movement coming back helps to stretch, but it's also for the organs, for the kidneys and such. So if you know how, um, how everybody does this, I don't know if we do it as much, right? Everybody stretches and they stretch like this, right? You know, just for that stretch, that, like a cat yawning. So in the Qigong, there's, there is a movement, right? And relaxing and coming up in a wider stance because it's coming back and in narrow stance. Oh, not so stable, yeah? <laughs> so wide stance and the knees come down, dropping, and the hips come forward and the whole curves and press up. And I don't do this. I don't let the head drop all the way back. I just want the neck in, in line. So I'm, I'm looking up there. Yeah, I'm not even looking straight up on the back, right? just looking looking at an angle, right? and then coming back down. So that's, you, you know, the stretch is obvious, but it's also for the organs, for the kidneys and such uh, back here. Yeah. So if you, if you find yourself doing that kind of stretch, right, just, just relax a little bit and then like, you know, breathe. And, and just, just feel over here, think of over the kidneys relaxing and then come down. Right. And then you then you turn it just from a stretch into a breathing exercise. <laughs> and then it becomes Qigong. Yeah. Okay. Alright, one more time. Extend the legs, press the knees down, yeah, stretch the ankles a little bit, gently release, and slowly walk them back just so they find the ground. <clears throat> Try to get your legs right in alignment. The right. hands down. Drop your shoulders. Pull your head back. Drop your chin. Or you imagine your head being pulled and suspended from above. Gently feel your feet expanding and pressing into the earth just a little bit. Relaxing the qua while you're expanding. The toes reaching down. 
and holding that stretch and expand the arms down open the palms open the joints use the ha sound in breathing and turn the palms and remember we want to extend and reach for it as you breathe in lifting Right. Feel the fingertips stretching, reaching, being pulled forward. Feel your body being pulled forward and then sinking back to center. Turn in the palms. Push your shoulder blade. Right halfway, feel everything fill up. And down. That light, light resistance. And then letting go, letting go of all the joints, still expanding, but you can feel the hips and the shoulders relaxing. Breathing in and extending, sinking back to center, lifting the sternum, that full feeling, everything connects and then coming down. Just the head, opening up the head. Expand the lower belly. Lift the sternum. Look straight ahead. And down. Feel the arms lengthening as they come down. Feel the fingertips being pulled forward, reaching, and then up, and then centering and relaxing. Start exhaling. Everything gets full and down. Okay, one hand up, one hand down. Extending and folding. Looking at the top hand and breathing in and turning. And up. Breathing in. And out, the bottom hand washing through the forearm and then washing down. Remember to use the ha sound. Each time you try and turn the head a little bit more, stretching the neck, loosening up the spine, the cervical. Finish the breath. Keep the fingers extended. And come back to center after this one. And right in front of the throat. And out. And down. With that light resistance. Right? Just guiding something. And keep the palms open and stretched as we move to the shoulder. Squeeze. And then up. And over. Turn the palms. Yeah. Want to get the shoulder joint to rotate. Yeah, when I went to the karate class, my fear was I'm going to walk in and they all were in gi. Yeah? And they're all going to stare at me like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> Come forward. Well, it was just, just a nice park and recreation senior class. <laughs> yeah. So no geese. Uh, half of them were in the yoga class before that. Uh, thought, oh, this is so relaxed. <laughs> All the way down. You relax, and then one side. Yeah, you know, it's funny, yeah, when, you, when you're young and you, you visit other schools and styles, doesn't matter what it is, everybody's full of attitude, right? But as I get older, right, and health becomes more important, <laughs> fall prevention becomes more important, right? Physical therapy becomes more important. Right? Then all the teachers, all the instructors come forth, can get together and say, hey, that stuff you were doing, that's really good. Can you, 
can you talk to my group? And then, yeah, it's, it's not about fighting, yeah? It's not about fighting and style, so. Yeah. It's interesting. All the way down. Relax. And when my teacher got, went public, not so much his choice, but because the son started doing tournaments and gave him his permission. So he went to schools around the mainland, California side, yeah, and then did seminars and things. And I went up once or twice with him. And oh yeah, it's just full of attitude, right? Everything is fighting and self-defense and my style and my teacher. And, uh, now it's, you know, now it's like when I grew up and the kids sit on the kids' table and we're so glad we had our table because we didn't want to sit on the adults' table because all the adults talk about at dinner time is gout and surgery and, <laughs> and doctor's visits, right? <laughs> now, I, now I'm at the adults' table. <laughs> Two sides. Yeah, finally I remember it's like, right, no health problem when the family gets together at the adult stable is off limits, right? <laughs> uh, relax. Okay, loose. And back then, you know, now, now our, our kids sit at the table, they're watching movies and films, so they're not listening in any way, right? Before we didn't have that, we had to listen to what the adults were saying. <laughs> and we couldn't ignore their conversation. <laughs> Breathe in and out. So I really like this movement because everything's in here. So open the throat. Breathe from here. You have time. Right? Expand the fingers. Expand the feet. Try to line the spine up right in the middle. Slowly rotate the palms throughout the whole movement. And then start thinking about the spine. The muscles on the side of the spine and then pull the spine in one direction, left or right, doesn't matter. And then release. And then pull the spine in the other direction. And then release. So you pull the spine to turn the body. And then release. Now pull the spine. Keep the legs sinking into the earth. One more time. Breathing in and out and relax. Okay. So as we progress, we're going down the body. Start making your legs heavy. And press a little bit more. Imagine your legs heavy, heavy, heavy. Just wiggle the toes so the toes can reach. As heavy as the legs are, as much as it's pressing and sinking, the very bottom of the feet have to be relaxed. And so everything is pressing here or being pulled, right? Being pulled down. Okay. Hold the ball, one hand up, one hand down, moving to the spine. Okay, relax first and then slowly stretch the shoulder blade, extend the fingers, let the wrist straighten out. Yeah, feel the spine stretching, expanding, while the legs are heavy, sinking into the earth. Top of the head being pulled, suspended, fingertips being pulled in each direction. Take a deep breath. And exhale when you're ready. Let everything fall back into place. But still expanding from the fingertips and the feet. And switch. Just breathe normally first. And find that full expansion. Drop the shoulder blades. Drop the shoulders. Feel the spine expanding. Feel the hips opening. The rib cage starting to open. Imagine the neck expanding. Force yourself to expand the lower belly. Open the throat. Take a deep breath. Expand. And 
and exhale when you're ready. The palms washing through the forearms. Breathing in as you expand and exhaling as you come down. Finish the breath. Just let the shoulders go. Now drop the elbow straight down. See if you can feel the warmth of the palm washing through the forearms. Point the bottom fingers down so they plug into the earth. Top fingers go straight up, plugging right into heaven. Drop the elbow and turn the palm. Pull the body, pull the spine, and wash the outside. Pull the spine. Breathe in and let go and exhale. And breathe in and wind up. Look over the shoulder and then let go and unwind. And breathe in and unwind. And then breathe in and wind up. Look over the shoulder and elbow and exhale. Right in the center. Stretch the fingers. Take the palm round. Expand the fingertips. Try to open up the finger joints. And try to create space in between all the finger joints, all the knuckles. Feel the fingertips being pulled by these cables stretching away. Come back to center when you're done. Right in front of the heart. Turn the palm. Pull the spine in one direction, relax the shoulder, let the head turn, breathing in and releasing when you're ready. Finish the breath, rotate the palms. Keep the palms right in the middle. Imagine the palms holding that little sun in your chest. Just Cradling that little sun right in the center of the chest during the whole movement. Remember that sun is being fed by the sun in the sky. Let the spine twist and open and then fall back into place. One more time. Last time. Come back to center. A little lower solar plex, tilt the sternum up, breathe in, feel the whole body fill up and expand. And then out and down. Okay, press both feet into the earth, heavy, 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 and let go one side. Press the other side 100%, feel one leg let go, and then sink into that hip. And press that leg heavy, heavy, heavy until this leg lets go and then sink into the hip. Then press both legs heavy, bottom of the feet sinking and then slowly let go. Okay, pull the chi up from the earth, just the palms. Guide it back down. Just gently guide it straight down. The back of the hand, back of the hand being pulled, the hand being pulled up. And then the hand being pressed down, right in the center of the hand being pressed down. In the center of the palm being pushed up, something pushing the palm up. And then something pulling the palm down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, relax. Okay, reset the feet. Okay. Press both feet into the earth. Yes. Then press one foot. Feel the other leg release. Sink into the hip, whichever leg. And then 
and it stretch and open the palm feel everything connect and begin right the standing foot relax relaxed so the bottom of the foot can sink and press into the earth and feel the palms feel the palms connecting with the movement let go right? and then pull back press and listen to the large joints there's a little little relaxation in between right right over here as you transition everything has to let go right, right over here transition right everything has to let go right. press feel how the palms helping one leg to sink one leg to rise right let go and then draw and just the surface of the palms and then open the throat and breathe let go and then switch right, so you can feel just before you pick up this leg you have to let go of all the joints right, to allow for that transition as high as you need and comfortably pick up come back to center hold the ball lower and drop one knee pull the spine to turn the body pull the fingertips out breathing in and out pull the spine Pull the fingertips straight to the front of the room right. and release. And take a step this time. Pull the spine and release. Take a step. Pull the spine and release. Take a bigger step. Pull the spine. Breathe in. Extend the fingers, let go. Yeah. And then the next one, if you can, you can step back a little, right? Whatever is comfortable. You start really opening up the hip joint. Yeah. The main purpose of this movement is to warm up the hips, and the waist area, the quad. Suggest what's whatever is comfortable. Last one. See, then small movement, and with a small movement, just dropping the knee, bring it in and out, and just drop the knee in yeah, and out, back to center. Turn the palms up. And remember, connect the palm with the leg. So decide which leg and opposite hand is coming up first. And press the other leg into the earth. Sink into the hip. And when you feel the leg release, right then come up. Heel first. And press the knee down. And even wrap. Use the palm. Pull that leg up and down. And switch. Press the knee, I'm sorry, the heel and the knee, and then lift with the palm. Lift. Yeah, rub the rib cage. Massage the rib cage at the same time. Heel, knee, and then toe. And then use the palm. Lift. Yeah. Like this. Rub right over here. And then the other side. Heel knee and then foot and lift and down and then add the spine heel knee foot and spine pull the spine turn the body and then come back and rub the ribs One more time each side. Just flow into the movement. See if you can connect the movement. So the turn 
begins almost from the start. And you don't have to wait to the end to pull the spine. And come back to center. Release. Hold the ball. Pick up one leg. Ankle. Achilles tendon. Keep the other leg nice and flat. Make sure that other other foot is fully connected with the ground. Right? If you want, you can still do that heavy leg, but sink into the hip. Switch. Relax and drop the shoulder. Just, right, just the palms activating that energy to help pick up the leg, to free up the leg. One more time, and then switch, small toe, big toe. And switch. And the more you relax, the more you can relax all these joints, the more you'll feel in your palm. And your palms can relax and they can stretch, which is manipulate that energy. Yeah. And back. Okay. okay. Pull the heels up, stretch the bottom of the feet, yeah. stretch the toes. Yeah, pull, pull, pull. Try to, try to get up on your tippy toes. Yeah. And I'm taking this, taking a lot of time off the last two weeks. I'm, I can barely pull on my socks this morning. Oh. <laughs> As I'm pulling on my socks, I can feel the bottom of my feet. Like, oh, it's going to cramp right there. <laughs> so this stretch is a nice maintenance. So, you know, over time, if you do it all the time, it will slowly help help all those feet muscles to relax and let go. And, yeah, help to reduce if you have leg cramps, foot cramps. Okay. Yeah, funny, I can feel all over here still sore from Tuesday. <laughs> I forget, I'm getting older. I tell everybody, drink apple cider vinegar after you work out hard. I go home, I forget to do it for myself. <laughs> Two days later, it's the next day you get stiff, or a little bit, right? But it's the second day. Oh, the second day, if you don't do anything, then everything locks up. Yeah, you get pain and stiffness. Yeah. First time I, I deadlifted, right? I thought, wow, I'm really strong. Look how much I can do. The next, the next day I was in the dorm, I was stiff. I literally rolled out of bed. I hobbled, came down gateway, hobbled down the steps. Just about, I don't even think I reached the, um, the crosswalk. If you don't know where Gateway is, it's right at the bottom of East West, right? So the crosswalk right there. I turned around and said, this is stupid. <laughs> I hobbled back, fell back into bed and just stayed there all day because I couldn't move. <laughs> uh, yeah, deadlift, is, deadlift works the entire body. <laughs> I found that out the hard way. <laughs> okay, let's stand up for a little bit. So, practicing this shifting, yeah, yeah, you don't have to stand up, you can either stand or sit. Right? So, looking at this shifting and really paying attention, listening, listening to your foot and starting to recognize what are the muscles doing, right? So, just shifting from side to side, right? First, I want to free up one leg. Right? So, if you want to pick up this leg, Right? We have to shift all the way, right? and if you know, we're going to fold a little bit, but if we don't fold a lot, you can feel yourself, you know, struggling. Right? It's it's muscle like just really holding on as hard as you can. Right? So, so you have to shift. Right? Let this fold. Let the butt stick out. Right? Let the, just relax the upper body. Right? Right? And then, the more you sink, the more this leg will release. And then you can pick up the leg, okay? But notice the leg will release, but you have to pick up the leg, yeah? 
you have to use muscle, okay? But pay attention to what this feels like, right? So you fold, right? You can feel you have to shift to get that weight right in the center. So if you're too, too far back, you have to shift your body forward and let the upper body go, right? From here, okay? And then turn, right? Let this relax and let this turn. And then as you turn, right? Then this leg starts to release even more. So you can pick it up, but it's not quite a struggle, right? And then we want to use the, the palms. So relax, right? So relax, right? Just let this fall. Light stretch, right? Just feeling, right? Sink, right? And you can imagine like maybe there's a light railing that you can rest on, but that railing can move, yeah, not hard. Just, just tapping, just that light tap, sink, and then let the body turn. Right, as you let the body turn, you should feel everything letting go, right? And then the turning will pull that heel with you, right? right? And then use your palms, just relax all the joints and just help to draw that leg up. Yeah. And then put that leg back down. Okay. And then as you turn, right? As you turn and let go, you have to let it go, right? So the muscle doesn't keep pushing, we don't want every muscle pushing there, right? Pay attention to what that feels like. Right? Not every muscle, not just one large lump mass of muscle, but all of a sudden it starts to go right in the center. Like you can feel, wait, certain muscles are doing more work. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try this side. Same thing, right? You're gonna shift, right? Relax, let this fold, let this stick back, relax. Right. You feel how the muscles start to tense and then fold or turn, let it turn, right? And it relaxes more, but you can feel right in the center getting tighter and then use the hands right, to help pull that leg up. You have to keep the shoulders relaxed, right? And just the palm yeah? and then put it back down and just help to guide. Right. So it's like you just have that light railing that light railing, that just tapping, just to help stabilize, but you can feel that connection. So, so re relaxing. Right? If you don't relax, if you don't learn how to relax, you cannot maximize what you can do. Yeah, and then feel it, feel that chi, feel that energy. So, we start from here. Okay? Just a small breath, and then ha. Oh. Right, let everything go. You release everything so you can listen. You stretch the back of the knees, lift the heels a little, and then ah. And then you decide when you're gonna start rising, right? When it just equalizes, <coughs> let the hands fall right to the side, stretch the knees back a little again, breathe in, and then ha, ah. just let it go. Right, then shift, right, let it turn, let it turn, let it sink, hands right at the side, right, until that leg is free, and then use the palm to help pick up the leg. Right. And step, and use the palm to help guide everything down. Yeah. And then let it fall, turn, right. feel everything release, and then use the palms to help pick up the leg, and then turn and put it back down okay. yeah. and then back to center okay so one time shift, right? so you have to be really light over here to allow you to shift and then as you sink as you sink you can feel you can gather with the palm pick it up and down right? and sink Right, back to center, or keep on turning, pull the spine, fold, turn, use the palm to pick up, yeah. and then put it straight back down, okay. and then turn, relax, okay. drop the shoulder, drop the hip, let it fold, right. use the palm, pick up, right. turn, the, pull the spine. Yeah. And then you can step, then you can walk. Okay. And you can come up, right? relax, pull the spine, pick up the leg, 
turn back to the front and step forward. You come forward, shift forward, down, right? Turn, right? The back heel comes up, yeah? Pick up and step forward, yeah? Come forward, relax, turn. So the back heel picks up, yeah? Drop the elbows and step and come back to center. So all you're doing is studying. Okay, so there's a lot of work, yeah, in here. That's, that's fall prevention. So fall prevention is learning to relax, learning correct movement, learn to let go, and having to build up strength, yeah. And you have to build up two things. You have to build up the muscle tissue, right? So the muscle, the fascia, all of that. But the bones. Okay, we got to get the bones stronger. So how do you, how do you get the bones stronger? You got to stimulate the bone marrow. So that's why any movement or any resistance training, right? And you think, okay, well, how does that do it? Right? It's just that stimulation, right? That oh, it's doing something. You do something. Oh, I got to get stronger, right? So what does that doing something do? It stimulates the blood flow right through the bone marrow. So it's not the resistance that's making it stronger, it's stimulating the blood flow. You understand? Yeah. Resistance training is one way to do it. It's a good way to do it, right? So you're stressing, right? When you add stress, the body has to respond. Stimulation. So the Qigong, right? I can stand here like this, and I can imagine the Qi flowing up my legs, through my body, out my fingertips, right? And you are you already know, right? You can do that, right? You already have that experience, right? You're starting to feel the energy. So if you're focusing on the chi flowing inside of the bones, right? It might be more subtle than resistance training. It might take longer, but you're stimulating the bone. The bone starts growing again, gets thicker. Yeah. Okay, so part of fall prevention is dealing with um, Bone density loss, yeah. yeah. I don't know, I can't think of the name. I, I, I'm going to say, <clears throat> no, what? Osteoporosis. osteoporosis, yeah. Osteoporosis. I had another word in my head and I knew it was totally wrong, so I didn't want to say it. But yeah, osteoporosis is right, yeah. the way our bodies work, right? We create cells and we lose cells every day, right? So if we're creating more cells, right? When we baby, we're creating more cells than we're losing, right? We grow. And then there's some, somewhere, somewhere between, I don't know, 40 and 60, right? Where it starts to equalize, right? And then it, the balance changes, right? But at that same time, our lifestyles change. We're doing less. So maybe naturally, the body by itself doesn't stimulate as much bone growth, but at the same time, because we're doing less, we're stimulating our body less to initiate bone growth. So then, right, we accelerate, right, the loss, the loss versus the gain. Yeah. So when we're young, right, if if all the if from baby we're teaching chico wow can you imagine how dense all our bones would be in in our 30s 40s 50s right and would still be growing yeah, yeah. but that's what it is and so relaxation it just affects everything positively yeah even the physical yeah okay so try that again we we'll do some walking and oh, so all, all you got to do is listen to, let this fold, balance, right? Don't do anything. If, if you're fighting, if you're pushing against the ground, relax, right? And whatever way you step, just focus on that relaxing. <clears throat> if you're in the chair, try to go heavy, heavy leg as you switch, right? Like those steps and just kind of move your body so you get more of a transfer. But yeah, so... So gather, 
Breathe in. Expand. Push the knees back. Sink. Let go. Ha. Just let everything go. Right? Determine when to rise. Just rest the hands straight down. Press the knees back. Breathe in. And ha. Let go. Right? Shift to one side. And pull the spine one way. Right? Right? And then use the palm right, to pick up. Right? Start activating the palm. Right? Keep on shifting to the left. Right? Let it fold. Right? Sink. Right? And then pull, use the hands, turn, right? use the hands to help stabilize the body and sink. Right? Keep on turning, pull the spine, fold into the hip. Right? Step up and take a step to the side. Right? Use the hands to stabilize center right? and then shift. I'm going to step forward. So you still have to turn, release the leg, pull and then turn back to the front and step up shift the whole body forward sink fold and turn pull the leg up step up turn the waist right? shift pull the spine fold let the body turn the back leg will release step to the side shift Use the palms to help stabilize, right? Shift and turn, sink, right? As you press down, the leg can come up. Step back a little. Right? Sit back, rolling back. Right? The body turn, back leg. Sink until the front leg is free and then pick it up. Right? And turn back to the front and step back. Use the hands to stabilize, right? Sink, turn all the way. Yeah. Sink, and pull the leg up yeah. and step back. Use the palms to stabilize, come back to center. Want to free the right, so you still have to fold and turn into the left. Relax. Back to center, come back to center. Yeah. And down. Just feel that light resistance rising. Rest the hands, shift to one side. Want to pick up the left, so we have to fold, turn into the right so that left foot can come back. Turn back, come up, expand, breathe in. Stretch, push the knees back a little, release. And then you decide when you're going to start rising, right? The feeling how the hands help the body to rise. Breathe in, push the knees back, and ha. And every time you practice ha, you're practicing like, oh, just that little letting go, right? Releasing everything, learning how to release all the joints. Every time that, and that stretch. Ha. So when you go, huh, feel your body drop on the ground. You want that heavy, that thud. Huh. Yeah, you want to feel the body, boom, it just stop. Yeah. So not, not bouncing, yeah. not down and up, just, huh. yeah, like that. You have that thud, yeah? It's like you pull the cotter pin out, right, and everything just goes, boom. <laughs> you guys never did that. Carrying, you're carrying that, that paper box or cardboard box heavy, right? And you're just tired, disgusted, whatever. You know, could be by yourself. You still, you just like, ah, and you just drop it, right? And intentionally drop it because you want it flat. Because you know if the bottom of the box drops flat, you get the biggest boom. And you're like, even if you're by yourself, right? <laughs> you're still mad at everybody because you had to do all the work. <laughs> if you don't think you, maybe you got to go back to to childhood right tantrum i don't want that <laughs> but that's the feeling just you have to let go and when you let go don't tighten up right right so you feel that tense oh try it again yeah so breathe in come up 
Huh? Yeah. There. So you see how the toes rock back? Okay. So the toes rock, rock back. So, so you have to say, okay, I got to drop down. And, and it rocks back because you push. I mean, that's, that's what we do. So you have to practice just, huh, and then just let it, yeah, letting it go. It's, it's a real fast thing, yeah? so. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Try again. Huh. Just drop. Yeah, you just have to let it go. Huh. Yeah. And try with your hands. Huh. Yeah, like throwing something down, relax. Huh. Yeah. Huh. And let the hands go loose. <laughs> ah. Yeah, like that. Getting more and more relaxed. It's not overnight because whatever habits we've, we've created, right? It's not, not going to just get rid of it overnight. And so you consciously have to feel that. Right? Ah. Yeah. So mentally, that's part of it, right? Just throw it into the earth. Ah. And then you throw something else. Ah. Like you throw in water balloon, egg, uh, whipped cream, right? You want that full splatter clay, soft clay, right? <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah, full splatter. Yeah, you do that kind of artwork, <laughs> right? Just full splatter. Yeah, that kind of feeling. Okay, listen up the lane. Yeah, okay. And that's fall prevention, right? And you can see the difference, right? If you can, you're either gonna, when you're dropping, you're either gonna relax and boom, stabilize, or you're gonna start falling and start fighting against the fall. Yeah? So, so if that dropping down and then coming up immediately shows you like, oh, that's my reaction. I gotta get rid of that coming up. I gotta learn to just, huh, just huh, right? relax. Let this go, let it fold. Huh. Can be like that. Huh. And I'm learning, I'm practicing just letting everything go. Right? And then huh. right. uh, adjusting my form, yes, so my upper form is better without affecting this. But I gotta start here first. Yeah? And then I come up. Because as soon as I come up, it expands. So this has to fold back. Yeah? So you really can't be perfectly upright here and have bends and folds here without some resistance here. It's just the geometry of the body. For the upper body to be, to be, or for this to be totally relaxed and have the fold, right? The body has to be like this. It has to be right angle over there. As soon as I do this, right, I have to shift my balance, but that's expansion unless I come way down like this. When I come way down like this, then my body can be upright. But look where the angle went, right? Right? The compensation of the angle changed, right? Instead of, right now it's going down, right? The view is going this way instead of going out that way. Yeah. So anytime we're forced to be upright here and bend, right, we're going to have some resistance. Yeah? Unless you learn to relax, but then you fold. Then the teacher yells, you straighten your back. <laughs> And the, what happens when the teacher yells at you? The whole body tenses, right? So the whole muscle body expands. So you're actually fighting to hold that form instead of relaxing to hold that form. Okay. So soon, soon and letting go. Right, where are we? Come up. Oh, so. You do hula, how do you make raindrops coming down? Yeah. Okay. So, you come here, you breathe in, right? You bring that cloud down, and then you make that raindrops come out, right? But that light resistance, right? And then you let it go. So this raindrops, what is that? This vibration, right? This vibration. So you extend the fingers while you're doing that. Right? 
but you're guiding down. Okay? So let the elbows tuck in. Okay. So when we do the shooting palm, that's just sideways raindrops, right? <laughs> Okay. And turning and sinking. Okay. And this has to fold, this has to fold. Same thing. Then this has to fold, this has to fold. Same thing. Okay. So this is vibration. Okay. Allowing this to come out, you cannot be tight here. Okay. You have to relax. The more you relax and the more you can expand. Right. And the more you can just vibrate from here. So if thinking of raindrops, Help you to vibrate, you think of raindrops. It is just uh, make it more energetic. Yeah, and let go of here. And then it'll come out. It'll come out more and more and more and more and more. And then when you want it to come out, when you want it to vibrate, the more you think away from your palm, you think of the back, and then the more you relax, and then you just let it vibrate. Sometimes it'll st just start vibrating by itself. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're in class with our set, our seated set. Yeah, let the body relax and expand, joints relax and expand, chin tilts down. Use the ha syllable to breathe in and out. Inner smile. Head suspended, feet being pulled into the earth, heavy, heavy, heavy. Palms open, relaxed, but expanded and stretching, fingertips being pulled. Check that your breathing is open and relaxed. Take a deep breath and let it all out. And then breathe normally, look straight ahead. Okay, commencement. When you're ready, breathe in and pick up your hands. As soon as you're ready on your next breath. Pulling the chi up, bringing it to your heart. And rolling it down, number one. Number two, roll it away and bring it into your body. Just cradling that energy in your palm, rising up close, sending it out, and then bringing it back in, settle back, <coughs> and listen to the feeling of doing the open and close, turn to your right, turn and press, rise, pull the spine and release, start dropping the right hand, a single whip, one saw. Release and then pull the spine and then release. So, so this is one. The other one is like preparation. Just follow, follow the palm your tips. Number two. Release, pull the spine, release, and pull the spine, then release. Come back to center. And feel, feel the breath, feel the expansion. Left side, single whip, pull the spine to the left, pull the palms out. Rising and then release. Follow the right hand. Drop the left hand. Pull the spine and then release. So this first one is preparation. Pull the spine, release. Now we start counting one. Pull the spine and release. Pull the spine and release. Two. So if you can really pull the spine, right? when you release, it's going to accelerate and then slow down and accelerate and slow down. Okay. 
As you come to the left, come back to center, hold the ball, release, and then feel the expansion, the open and close. Brushing the knee right side, so pull the spine to the right, pull the fingertips straight up, and then the fingertips get pulled forward and release. Flow the heart energy out of the right hand. Keep on turning, roll the palms, and then as you release, let the hands slide against each other and then pull the spine and release. Okay, parry right, parry left. Switch. Let the palms and fingertips vibrate. Pull the spine, release, cover. Pull the spine and start grabbing, breathing in. Release. And then pull the spine, let the body turn and release back to the center. And then rolling back, and let the spine just oscillate back and forth. Lift the sternum, pull the palms out, and then release, slowly come back to the heart. Drop everything down, breathe in and out. Open and close. And brushing me on the left side, pull the spine to the left. Pull the fingertips up, breathing in, fingertips forward, and exhale. Breathe in, and roll, and exhale. Pull pipa, holding the pipa, release, and shoots under the elbow. Parry left and parry right. Breathe in and release, cover, pull the spine, breathe in, release, squeeze the fists when you exhale, and then release, let the body go back and forth, Get, lift, release, come back to center, left side again, breathe in, Pull the fingertips forward, release, exhale. Flow the heart energy out of the left. All right. Pull the spine and then release, leisurely tying the coat. Right hand circles up, pull the spine and release. Pull the spine to the left and release. Pull the palm out, pull the spine to the left, release, big spiral. Double palm, release, open and close. Okay, I'm going to switch, I'm going to do it the um, technically right way. <laughs> so instead of repeating, right, you're actually supposed to do the fist on the elbow first. So come out right, and then open and then drop the right hand and fist under the elbow and then pull the spine and rotate. And as you release, the bottom hand grabs that fist, turns, drop the elbow, come back to center, then pull the spine until fist on the elbow. Breathe in. As you exhale, release. Let the fist come out and then open and come up and fold. And pull the spine right and brush the knee. Expand, flow the heart energy out of the right. Keep on turning to the left. Repulse monkey. Right hand washes down the forearm. Lift the sternum. Keep on turning. Breathe in and out. Leisurely tying the coat. Pull the spine a little to the left and as you release, let's let the hand circle down and up. And pull the spine to the right. Connect the fingertip to the wrist and lift. And pull the spine to the right, pull the fingertip out and release. Now the brush knee and leisurely tying the coat right on the right side. So pull the spine, breathe in. Pull the fingertips forward and release. Flow the heart energy out of the right palm. 
Leisurely time hold. Left hand circles up. Release. Pull the spine left. Lift. And out. Pull the spine. Pull the fingertip. Winding up and release. Double palm. Yeah. Yeah. So just. Yeah. So so this hand, let this hand sweep outwards. Yeah, like you you want to keep something away from you, yeah? So keeping something away, keeping something away. Out and then open and close. Okay, then fist on the elbow, left side. So turn. And open, but drop the left hand. Turn the body. Come back to center, bottom hand holds the fist, the elbow drops. And keep on turning until the fist lines up with the elbow, breathing in. And as you exhale, release. Let the fist pull forward and then open and rise. And come in, pulse monkey left, brush knee, brush the right knee, lift the sternum. Keep on turning. Breathe in and out. Make the palm nice and large so all that heart energy can flow out of the palm and the heart out through the palm. Leisurely tying the cold. Right hand comes in and circles up. And down. Lift. And then out. Pull the fingertips out and release. Swim. And release. Closing. Lift. Tilt the sternum up. Breathe in. Yeah, feel the whole body connect. The whole body connect. Release the shoulders, but hold the palms. Press both feet into the earth. And then transfer to one. So one leg can come back, and just the palms helping that leg to pick up only the surface of the palms. Breathe in and up. Okay. Notice, you notice now when you pick up the second leg, your upper body doesn't move as much. Yeah. So I can see it, the upper body is starting to become still. That's what they call st stillness in motion, right? stillness in movement. Right? So the more right, you press first, right, wherever that leg is, right? the standing leg, right? but press, press, expand, and then sink into the hip. Right? And if you can sink 100% into the hip, right, even the chair, to really sink into this hip, my body has to turn. Right? And then that will release. So 100% zero. Right? If you don't use your palms, right? Palms are tied up, then all muscle, right? But if you open your palm, then that energy, it can help to pull. And if you move the hand, even better. Right? We need. Yeah. And that's why, oh, I don't like this position anymore. Open is okay. But to learn, Right? To build force, to build up the muscle. Now I understand why the hand is closed. Because they're isolating the muscle, right? So in the beginning stages of development, oh, it's, it's hard work. That's what the Kung Fu is. Kung Fu, is. Kung Fu doesn't mean martial arts. <laughs> Kung Fu means hard work. And it's, it's a reference to, um, it's a compliment. It's, it's I can see your hard work. I can see the quality of your work. Yeah, I can, I can see it. So you tell somebody they have good Kung Fu. Oh, your Kung Fu is so good. It can apply to anything that they're doing. It can be art, right? It can be fine arts, it can be physical arts, it can be work, right? Oh, you're expert at stacking the shelves, right? Oh, that's good Kung Fu. And you can see that, right? There's technique involved. And through all that hard work and technique, all oh, refinement comes. Yeah. So, yeah, kung fu is kung fu is a misnomer. <laughs> but 
Kung Fu describes the effort and result. Yeah. Wu, wushu, wushu is, mili uh, wushu is mil military arts and Chuan Fa. Chuan Fa is really probably the more correct term, at least in Cantonese. Chuan Fa is the fist, yeah. Chuan Fa is really the, oh, we're going to fight. <laughs> how's, how's your Chuan Fa? Oh, how's your, how's your fighting technique? <laughs> okay, listen up the lady. And we'll end with our bell meditation. So do the bell meditation. Sung is number one. Right? Relax, let go. Any distractions, acknowledge it and let it go. Relax all your facial muscles. Just think of the sun, connecting to the sun in your chest. Think of anything that makes you smile, even laugh. Right? But to bring that smile out. Slowly open your eyes, rub your hands, move your legs. Ah. Yeah, warm up your eyes. And brush your scalp front to back, center to outside. Yeah, at least three times. And then unroll your ear, yeah, pull on your ear lobe up. Okay, tap. And then pull the muscle away from your neck. Oh, and then cup. Lesson one, ah, <laughs> in and down. Yeah. Okay, so right, let it go, right? Ha, right? So breathe in, ha, right there, right? Come up, clear everything out, right? Let it go, right? And then, <laughs> ah. Okay. <laughs> Did it stop raining? Oh. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Oh.